Our main character, Aina, hits a tree with his axe, but gets immediately yelled by his mother as if it falls it may crush the house. His sister wonders if he is training to be a woodcutter, but Aina states he is training for battle. His mother laughs at him stating he will be useless in battle and calls him to come for lunch. While they eat, his mother wonders why he is training and Aina explains that he wants to protect this place. Their village was burnt down and they finally rebuild it and he wishes to protect it. He is frustrated to always be on the losing side and his father died protecting them. His mother tells him that they haven't lost all. Soon the village get raided. Aina, Lada and their mother make a run to the woods, but an arrow hits their mother in the back. She wants them to leave her, but Aina and Lada stay by her side. As men approach, their mother tells Aina to take Lada and run and live. Moments later, she takes her last breath and dies. Aina and Lada are frozen and shocked. The men arrive and take Lada. Aina tries to stop them, but gets knocked back. Lada takes out her hairpin and stabs one of the men in the back, which angers him and he kills her. The other are annoyed he killed a good-looking girl, but decide to take Aina and sell him for beer. Aina struggles in anger as he is being taken, but is unable to do anything. Sometime later, Aina is on a boat with other slaves. A female slave coughs non-stop. The men check her and realizes she won't make it and throw her overboard. Aina is angry and asks them why they did it, but the man hits him and check his throat. As he is okay, the man tells the rest to keep themselves warm and not get cold. When they reach land, they feed and bath the slaves so they look good and healthy when they try to sell them. While being lined for a sale and the men don't pay attention, Aina sees a chance and runs away. He reaches a house and being hungry, he steals some food, but as he runs from the house, one of the slavers finds him. He beats him up and brings him back to the other slaves. The man uses Aina as an example and tells the rest that even if they run, no one will help them as they are far away from home and don't have money. They need to find a good master, who will take care of them. Aina accepts his fate as even if he runs away, he doesn't have where to return to anymore. One day while being lined for sale, the slavers bring Leaf stating that Aina is the man he is looking for. Looking at him, Leaf yells at them that he doesn't look like anything he described, and is neither blonde or small. The slaver apologizes, and still tries to sail Aina, but Leaf explains he isn't looking to buy a worker, but to free his relative, Thorfinn. As slavers haven't heard of him, Leaf apologizes to Aina and leaves. Aina thinks that Thorfinn is lucky to have someone looking for him. Moments later, Ketil shows up and inspects Aina. He asks him for his name, from where he came and what he was doing before. Aina explains he was a farmer in northern England. Liking what he heard, Ketil asks Aina if he would like to help him with his farm. Ketil then buys Aina and brings him to his farm. Ketil shows Aina his farm and explains he will introduce him to the rest at dinner, since they are working right now. Seeing the farm, Aina is reminded of his land and family. He knows he will never be free again and wonders if his mother was right that he still haven't lost everything. Aina starts to think that if he is obedient and serves a good master, he won't starve. Ketil takes Aina to meet Thorfinn, who is cutting wood. Ketil introduces Aina to Thorfinn and explains that starting today they will be friends and will be doing the same job. Ketil proceeds explaining what they will be doing and points to the forest and asks Aina what it looks like to him. Aina guesses it's a forest, but Ketil corrects him, saying it will be a future wheat farm. Ketil owns the forest and will let the two borrow it. Aina and Thorfinn will clear the land, work it, and reap the harvest, and then Ketil will buy it from them for a fair price. Once that price exceeds their own price as slaves, they can buy their own freedom. Aina realizes that means they can buy their freedom and Ketil confirms it, stating that if they work hard, they may be free in three years. Aina is shocked, but gladly accepts. Ketil tells them to turn to Pater if they have any problems or questions. Pater explains he became a free man by the same means, and wish them all the best of luck. Before leaving, Ketil tells Aina he can rest today and observe how Thorfinn works. Thorfinn returns into the forest. Aina follows him and wonders what kind of man is Ketil and if what he said is normal for Denmark, because in his homeland, a slave is a slave for life. Aina reveals he is from northern England and wonders about Thorfinn. Thorfinn stays quiet for a moment but reveals he is from Iceland, but Aina doesn't know where that is. Seeing the cut trees, Aina is impressed how many Thorfinn had cut already and wonders how much are left. Thorfinn points at river and explains that all from that side of the river must be cleared. Aina then realizes that there are quite a lot of trees left. Thorfinn returns to cutting trees. Aina decides to do it too, 
but his axe is stuck on the tree on his first strike. Thorfinn reminds him he was told to rest, but Einar states he wants to earn his freedom faster. Thorfinn asks him to them start a bit further away from him and cut the trees so they fall perpendicular to the river. Einar then realizes that way, they can float them down the river. As they work, Einar gets a bit hungry and wonders about lunch. Thorfinn explains that when the time comes, farmhands will bring them lunch. Einar hears some voices and guesses the food is coming. Einar meets the men, who give him a bag with the food, but Einar is surprised how little it is. The men guess that it's his first time being a slave and state he is lucky to be fed at all. They are free men who bring him lunch, so he needs to thank them. Einar gets angry, but Thorfinn comes, takes the food and thanks them. The man tells Thorfinn to teach Einar some manners and to not injure the horse. The four men then go to sleep under a tree. Thorfinn ties the horse to a tree and tells Einar that he and the horse will be pulling, while Einar pushes from behind. Einar asks if they could cut the tree more, but Thorfinn explains it's owned by their master and they can't cut it more without his permission. Einar guesses this is those four men's job, but Thorfinn tells him to forget it. The two along with the horse, then start pulling the trees toward the river. In the evening, Einar is hungry and tired and angry at the farmhands. He guesses that farmhands don't have their own land and need to serve the master and Thorfinn confirms it. Einar then states they are half-slaves and are just bullying those that are under them to feel superior. Einar wonders if Thorfinn agrees, but Thorfinn doesn't care. Einar states that they are owned by the master and his farmhands shouldn't order them around. He wants to report them to Ketil, but Thorfinn tells him to not do it otherwise they will harass them even more. Einar is furious that Thorfinn is fine with that. Ketil shows up and wonders how their first day was. Einar states he has a report, but then sees a woman and gets distracted by her beauty and stops talking. As Einar isn't responding, Ketil guesses there is nothing to report and continues on his way. Next day, Ketil and his farmhands are harvesting wheat. The kids bring some fresh water and after drinking, Ketil tells them they finish this batch by noon. Einar is surprised to see Ketil working as he thought rich people never worked. Einar then sees a young man struggling to harvest wheat properly and is evidently annoyed at having to be on the field in the first place. The young man is Ulmer. Ketil attempts to help Ulmer, however Ulmer states that he is already doing what he told him to do. Ketil tells him to use hand sickle and cut below the knee. Ulmer states it doesn't matter since it's still getting cut, but Ketil states that after the harvesting comes the grazing, and they leave long stumps so the livestock can eat them. Ulmer gets more annoyed as Ketil keeps explaining on how to harvest. Einar wonders who is that and Thorfinn tells him it's Ketil's son. Ulmer gets angry and states he had enough. He decided to help once, but Ketil won't stop complaining. Ketil tells him that he needs to listen and he will inherit the farm, but Ulmer isn't interested in doing boring farm work. Ulmer attempts to pull out his sword from behind his back, but as the blade is too long he can't take it out of the sheath. He then takes it back and runs off on his horse, stating he wants to make a name for himself with his sword one day. Later that night, Ulmer practices his sword play and states he will be going to England soon and joining Prince Canute's army. He sees a moth and attempts to cut it, but misses. Ulmer is with a woman in his bed who wonders when he'll be leaving, but Ulmer doesn't know and states that King Harold should be calling for reinforcements soon. The woman thinks it's better if he takes over the farm, explaining she is worried about him and invites him back in bed. Outside, the woman's father and mother are listening and hope that Ulmer keeps sleeping with their daughter so that their future will be secured. Moments later, Ulmer comes out angry and the two wonder if their daughter done something. Ulmer yells at them, stating he knows they just want to become part of Ketil's family and live in luxury. Angry, Ulmer leaves stating all women are rotten. Ulmer rides frustrated. He sees two drunk farmhands, who tell him it's dangerous to ride at night. Ulmer wonders what are they doing there and the two explain they went to see a woman, but other retainers got there first. They couldn't start a fight as they will get in trouble and find Ulmer lucky as he can do what he wants. The two realize that Ulmer is angry and decide to take him with them to continue drinking and chat. In bed, Aina mumbles that Ulmer should take the farm. He doesn't know war and probably thinks warriors are cool but anyone who goes to war is a beast. Thorfinn tells him to go to sleep as they will be waking up early. Einar explains that soldiers came to his village twice. First came the King of England's soldiers, who burned every house. His father fought them, but died. After that came the Danes, claiming they were saving them from the tyranny of the King of England, but they pillaged everything they could. Einar thinks they are beasts in human skin. Einar asks Thorfinn if he is asleep, 
but Thorfinn doesn't respond as he recalls similar scenes from his own past. Make sure to check out the next part of this recap. Also don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time, goodbye.